Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us here reputed commentator and the rural affairs editor for the Hindu, Mr. P. Sainath, and with whom we shall discuss issues related to the media and in particular the nature of media discourse today. Welcome to News Click, Mr. Sainath. Uh, Mr. Sainath, uh, A.K. Anthony, the Defence Minister, uh, recently said the other day that uh, there is a transparency revolution going on in the country today. and. Uh, which has uh, not spared anyone from any of these four states, uh, be the polity that's executive in the legislature, the judiciary or the media. Uh, but in your opinion, is this scrutiny uh, substantive enough or is it superficial? What you're watching is Hamlet being staged without the Prince of Denmark. Hmm? The biggest, uh, the, you're, you're watching saturation coverage of nothing much. There are the largest entities like say corporations and corporate corruption which are central to all your giant scams that are going on are completely absent in this. The demands are made over a bribe here and a, or a bribe there or nothing to do with the massive explosion of corruption scandals as corporate power has grown in ascendancy in the last 20 years. So you're talking about corruption in the abstract in the Right? Now about the different, all the four estates being covered, that's absolute nonsense. The, there's total silence, for instance, on corruption in the media. It's just a couple of newspapers that have actually written about it, spoken about it. Otherwise, it's just been completely blotted out of existence. And uh, even if you were to say, look at the radio tapes, they've been given a decent burial. Now the radio tapes weren't so much about the media, in my opinion. The media appeared as, you know, uh, little bit players or comedians in the whole show. What the radio tapes showed you was who was running this country. What kind of corruption was possible where corporate houses could determine who would be minister, which portfolio he would get, which minister would be shifted to which portfolio, and everything that they discuss happens. And then you have Mr. Tata running to the Supreme Court to see that the tapes cannot be made public. Right? You, you know, absolutely no outcry over this in the media. What about this? Why are they so scared of investigating that corruption? Now, once you get specific, you're going to get into a lot of trouble about what's being covered. Uh, of all the scams that are, you know, in, with the UPA, there are, there are two a day. One scam that's virtually disappeared, for instance, and nobody wants to look at it, is the Devas, Antrix, spectrum, spectrum Scam. Complete silence. Too many people, too many beautiful people, the class we call the PLUs, people like us, too many of them are implicated. And you get into the Devas, Isro, Spectrum Scam, it's going to lead you very, very high institutionally and individually. There's no discussion of this. It's in the abstract about somebody fighting corruption. So that in one sense, uh, what's being, what is being the focus is merely malfeasance. That is some misbehavior or you know, untoward thing that a minister or, uh, or someone in power does. Well, let, let me put it with in, in greater clarity. What you're looking at, see, what are the sources of corruption in India? Hmm? Now, everyone has his own corruption story. right? I would say there are many and you have to grant that. But I would say there are three sources without fighting which you're not going to get anywhere special. Hmm? One is structural inequalities in Indian society, right? And that includes caste, gender, everything, but that the structural inequities of Indian society are one of the major sources of corruption because of powerlessness and power, the ability to hold people to ransom, that comes from your structural inequalities. The second source is the policies which have always in independent India favored the powerful but which in the last 20 years have deepened these inequalities at an exponential rate. So policies that are positively designed to, to favor corporate interests and therefore you have seen a corresponding explosion of corruption but we are not making the connection. The third source is what I call India, Indian society's culture of arbitrariness and impunity. You know, a judge bans buns because his car got caught in the traffic on the way to the airport. 
you know, you you get away with this that culture of impunity and arbitrariness it also reflects in some of the civil societies groups activities where they demand the right to rewrite the constitution have a panel and we will decide who will sit on this panel that's also part of the culture of arbitrariness that sense of entitlement of the upper classes right so these three sources if you are not able to battle or combat these you are not in the anti corruption game in my opinion you are on the fringes the corporatization of the media you yourself have written you know extensively on that you know the symptoms of this corporatization in terms of the paid news private entities yeah. and uh, but could you elaborate for us again in the last 20 25 years what you've seen is you've seen a kind of globalization of media also in a period where it is finance capital that is in the ascendancy in the 80s still the 80s we spoke of media monopolies that is no longer relevant the media monopolies are now a part of much larger conglomerate monopolies okay now AT&T general electric um uh seagram all these giant monopolies you have these giant mono- conglomerates which are into a million things gulf and western is into about you know 150 lines of production so the media are part of these are part of those now until this january nbc which was the fourth largest tv network in america and once the world's largest television network was owned by for several years by radio corporation of america which was the seventh largest contractor in the Pent- to the pentagon every western missile has radio corporation of america in its head that guided computer the guidance computer is rca who takes over everything general electric which was the second biggest contractor or surely one of the largest military contractors in the world what implications does that have for the content and conduct are you then going to have nbc fighting against weaponization against expanding arms markets no no yeah the what you call the military industrial complex is actually now a military industrial informational cultural complex now this doesn't mean that their routine media functions cease to operate but they operate very differently from how they did 30 years ago there are spaces there are zones of autonomy fast shrinking take the largest 10 media houses whether in the world or in india please go and visit their boards and see how many journalists are sitting on the board journalism is an irrelevant trivial by product of what they do it's not irrelevant it's important but it is a by product of what they do it has to serve what they do now in the dynamic jagran board you find the head, south asia head of mcdonalds hmm you find a representative of the board of general electric and a bo- member and another guy who's been a member of the board of raytheon corporation most of these guys cannot speak or read hindi but what's it got to do with journalism they are there for a conglomerate to maximize profit and they they're good at that the third thing is that the media in is interlocked into hundreds of other sectors okay now here is the key for you and your viewers to understand what's happening in india how is it different from the conglomerate uh, media at the global level there is a specific indian character according to me we are seeing a phenomenal convergence of corporate world media world political world and family business now the marans are a phenomenal example of this convergence family business ministerial power the uh, information and communication business and business and business as business so these four are converging very fast you can look at it in punjab you can look at it in Tam- in in maharashtra the owner of one of the most powerful newspapers in the state of maharashtra is your union agriculture minister who also owns the largest agricultural supplement in the uh, agricultural newspaper in maharashtra called agro 1 the guy is he's also the head of bcci so he's in that business he's in the cricket business he's in the agriculture business he's in big agri business he's in the newspaper business and he's the union minister for agriculture and some some suspect he also has ties with the big real estate business as well i think he owns the big real estate business okay lokmat the fourth largest newspaper group in the country 
and uh, not only the fourth largest group in the largest in maharashtra one brother is a member of parliament in delhi the other brother is a minister in the maharashtra cabinet who used to be a minister of state but got to be a minister of full cabinet rank what happened for his promotion it's called the ashok nama the ashok chavan paid news game happened in that period and the gentleman got a promotion from being nothing to to, to going up the paid news thing is worth in maharashtra alone at least 1000 crores in the last assembly election okay it's, it's it's literally it is manufacturing content paid news is the death of journalism it is driven by corporate interest it is driven by corporate greed and profit and there is outright outright lying to the readers and viewers is a perfectly normal practice in television in some of the economic channels each line and reference to your company is sold and paid for i always say of the indian media that it is politically free imprisoned by profit hmm? now what are these how are these guys going to take positions on corruption when the owner of the company and the owner of that media is in the dock on the 2g scam the head of the family that owns sakal is your union agriculture minister is involved in one scam after the other in the ipl uh, you know for sharad pawar ipl bpl apl are all there's no big difference right it's all money so he is in it now um, how will how will those newspapers how will those newspapers take up the issues of corruption because the convergence has happened and that brings us to a more contemporary relevant issue uh, only last week we saw you know very strong editorials against uh, what uh, proprietors newspaper proprietors claim uh, you know interference by the government uh, in terms of uh, the, the recommendation that has come from the justice majithi of wage board actually many armed forces officers were telling me this spotting they were laughing about the campaign against the wage board being launched in the times of india and by this institution the indian newspaper society uh, the armed forces officers were pointing out to me that they are writing that what these people want is more than what our jawans get on the border they said when the pay commission for those guys was on there was not a word in the media there were editors who said why should it be increased now they have become patriotic and are worrying about the jawans on the border when they have to pay their peons a little bit more hmm? secondly there is complete falsification of figures and deliberate alarmism built into it that the pune will earn for you know there are journalists in top newspapers of this country in mumbai in a city of mumbai's cost journalists with 3 years experience who regularly feature on the front page of newspapers who take home less than 16000 rupees a month hmm? now their salaries structure is inflated and shown wrongly a large part of your salary is called variable performance component hmm? and they tell you on the start that you can never get more than 60% of this tvm or vpc or different newspapers call it so so you start out with a salary package of 28000 30000 you're taking home 15 16000 now it is true that in the same newspapers in the same newspapers there are journalists next to those journalists who are earning phenomenal salaries now you are able to give 1% phenomenal salaries and make huge profits by creating huge inequalities between between different categories of within categories of journalists now if you had a wage if you and i are both assistant editors i might be earning more than you in terms of my seniority i might be earning more than you in terms of the incentive payment or whatever given to me but it cannot be five times what you are earning if we are both in the same category second is notice that this entire campaign is being conducted huh, without any opportunity for the other side to reply zero opportunity the editorial page has been used advertisements are being used to bombard the public huh, and uh, you you haven't even heard what the other argument is you know when armed forces officers are talk, finding it funny uh, they wa- they want to know what the position of the journalists is because we don't see anything newspapers that are making this one they would have to yes they would have to end up paying their 
top 1% less if they implemented the page board, but they would still be making very huge profits, most of them. Most of them.